hope you didn't mind my long introduction there, but no limits is important to consider here, what we're talking about, all right? What we're talking about here is how do you get started programming? You have no idea how to get started, or you're wondering, you're budding. Well, for starters, i got to tell you that programmers are a dime a dozen, so if this is going to be a career thing for you, you have to stand out, which means you might have to mix different careers into one to make like a vertical expertise or specialization that will help you make some coin. All right. So if you're just wanting to learn how to programming for a hobby or for business, whatever, we're going to cover that ground. I just want to make it very clear that you're not going to go into programming for a few months, start being able to do something, and go out there and make a bunch of coin, a lot of money. That's just not going to happen, okay? The competition is crazy. Okay, everyone has to find their niche. My niche is CR what they call CRM systems, customer relationship management systems. I do a lot of stuff with integrating different systems and uh, making them talk to each other, um, letting people see information they're supposed to see letting other people not see information that they're not supposed to see all these kinds of things all right so I want you to take that and uh, just put it in the back of your mind and remember that it's competitions fierce there's people around the globe working for as little as five dollars an hour if you want to stand out you need to be a, you have to have some sort of specialty okay now moving forward where do you how do I get started programming what do I do what do I do um well for starters you're gonna need to do some googling okay the real thing is, is that you need to pick a programming language that's right for you. And how do you know it's right for you? Well, what do you want to do? What's, easiest for you, what is, is, what's the easiest way for you to learn? For example, um, when I got started, I got introduced to this thing called Atomic Sinclair. It had 2K of memory and it, knew, and it had basic. That was the only language it had. You could do a cartridge and expand it to 16K of memory. And for those folks who are used to gigabytes and terabytes, a K of memory is only 1,024 numbers that can only go to 0 to 255. So 16K was about 16,000, give or take, of those. Actually, well, I think it's 163. Oh, 1, 6, 1, 8, 5, 6. Look, actually, you start doing these binary numbers, but sometimes they don't matter, and that's why I can't recall it. Um, is it 16, 3, 3, 5, or something? 16, whatever. All right. Um, so, okay, there I go, a little, t a little geek thing there, whatever. So, anyway, the point is, is that this thing had basic. I liked it. I learned how to do it. I started making those choose-your-own-adventure books kind of things into games, except I made up my own stories. Then I got a Commodore 64 after dabbling with Apple IIe's at school and stuff. But um, I got a Commodore 64, and the games I made, or the programs I did, didn't run nearly as fast as the video games I bought and loved. So I didn't understand that until I saw the back of this book that I had on my Commodore 64 that talked about assembly language. I knew that was the key, but I didn't know how to do it. I tried. I looked at it. It didn't make any sense to me. It was all Greek. So... I got this little thing from Radio Shack. It had like a little mi microprocessor on it. Teach you how to program in a little microprocessor. It was all using a number system called hexadecimal, which is a way of representing numbers um, in, a, in a different fashion. Instead of counting to 10, you count to uh, 15 before you get to the 1, 0. And they use letters to represent that. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then 1, 0. Don't worry, you don't have to remember that. I'm just telling you, that's how I had to learn that. So I had to learn that, and then I learned how to program this little uh, microprocessor and it was assembly language, or machine code, actually. And uh, assembly and machine code are really much almost the same thing. Assembly makes it a little easier for a guy like you or me, or a woman like you and not me, um, to, <laughs> to uh, make a program and type it in, and then it'll get compiled to the machine code. But assembly code is almost like talking machine code. It's not like using other languages that get compiled. Um, it's actually much closer to the hardware, um, running on the metal. Um, all right, so I learned how to do that. When I, when I got a little bit of a clue how that worked, even though that was a very simple system, and I want you to remember this, I had to go to something very simple to understand a harder concept. And then eventually I got into an assembly language program, and I started writing programs that were like hybrids, half basic, half machine code or whatever, assembly. And, um, and they ran really fast, you know, so I was just like, wow, that's awesome. Stuff was, so not only did I was able to start writing programs and stuff, I, I understood this new level, this new harder stuff. So I want you to know with whatever language you start, if you're having a hard time getting it, don't give up, all right? Because even if you're getting it, you're going to be banging your head against the desk because of how just frustrating sometimes programming can be. But the rewards are really good because when something that you make actually works, it's like, yeah! So, But if you're trying to learn something and you're not getting it, don't think you're stupid. Don't. It's complicated stuff. Like I went to the simple microprocessor thing. Pick something that's a little easier because once you get that, Going back to something more complex is going to be much easier. A lot of times people's first choice in a programming language is like way too hard for them. All right? I want you to know a lot of people always say, learn C and C++ is your first language. <coughs> Pardon me. But let me tell you something. 
There's these nuances in that language that make it very difficult. And if you don't understand things like pointers and all this weird stuff right from the get-go, programming is murder. And you are going to run into programmers who are going to, who, who are going to talk a bunch of junk because you, you, oh, well, you can't hang. You know, don't, don't listen to them, all right? I learned on BASIC. It was useful to me to have things that read like English so I could understand simple concepts. You know, I started writing some big programs. I like Free Pascal. That reads like BASIC, but has all the features and stuff that C++ does, and it's actually extremely portable, meaning I can run it on a, I can run it on a PlayStation. I can run it on a Macintosh. I can run it on a Linux machine. I can run it on a Windows box. All right, that's why I like it. I don't have to change everything. I can compile it right at once, and it compiles everywhere. That's why I like it. Um, but there's all kinds of languages out there. If you want to do web programming, uh, the C, the C++, Free Pascal, Perl, Python, PHP, these are all valid ways, and in fact, ASP.NET is another one for Microsoft uh, server, web servers. Um, these are all valid ways of writing programs that run on the web. That's on the server side. How do you write a program for the server side that's in C++ for a web server? How do you do that with Free Pascal or what? How do you do those? You make what's called the CGI program, and if you can make one of those, it actually um, is fired off by the web server, runs, does its request, and then it, then it, it shuts down. And each time a web request comes in, that's how it works. Um, and b if you make one of those, you can actually install those on all kinds of web servers, different kinds. It doesn't even have to be the same brand. The other way is to write it so it actually hooks into the web server. But now you're kind of limited to just that web server. So there's a lot of ways to do the web side. And that's the server side of web programming. Okay? There's also the client side, which means what's happening inside of the browser. All right? There's tools like Flash for Adobe to get fancy. Of course you have HTML. And, and you're probably going to want to learn these things if you want to do web programming anyway, regardless whether you're doing the back end or just the front end stuff. You're going to want to learn HTML. You're going to want to want to learn cascading style sheets. Cascading style sheets kind of control how web things are drawn. Do you need them? No. What's nice about them is that you can design a web page with CSS, and just by modifying the CSS, you can change the whole look of the website if you get into designing them properly so that they mesh in a way that this can happen. Um, there's also, uh, in the browser, a programming language called JavaScript. I don't think that's personally my best recommendation for starting out because it's got a lot of features of other programming languages, but it's, and it's very fast, but it's got enough, pardon the expression, quirks in how its language is constructed that it doesn't translate so well going into other languages. But that's not to say you can't start with JavaScript. Alright? It's not. I just that wouldn't be my first choice. Alright? But as far as simplicity and starting to get some use out of it, sure. You might want to try that. Um but again it's not my first first one. Now if your thing is video games, graphics, 3D stuff in particular um, or even just the 2D stuff. There's a lot of different game engines that have that either are, are complemented by a particular programming language or come with some sort of scripting language or something bundled in. And you're like, why, why do that? Why I can't I just write it from scratch? You can. It's going to take you a very long time in any language to write anything really quality, um, pretty much. Maybe the exception on a mobile phone, because you're only dealing with a screen this big, there's not as much code to write. You'd still have a lot. You'd be amazed how much code might be behind a little screen window that's only a few inches wide. I guess some of them now are getting pretty big, you know what I mean? Whatever. All right, but the point is that these game engines uh, make it so that a lot of the work is done for you. The audio system, the 3D world, um, the ability to load models, 3D models, or even load 2D tiles and put them on the screen and layer them for you. Um, this might be beneficial, be, well, for, it's beneficial anyway if you're just doing game development, but it might be a beneficial place to start if there's scripting language you don't find too difficult because you're going to get, like, like when, you know, you, your dog sits for the first time, you give him a biscuit, and now they do it again and again. Well, it's going to be, I hate to belittle it, but it's going to be the same kind of thing because if you were looking to do video game stuff and after a little bit of coding and following a tutorial or something like that, you're actually able to make some guy get loaded up on the screen and walk around, you're going to feel really good, and that's going to motivate you to do the next thing. 
No different than if you were writing a business program and the first time you got the form to draw um, and not allow someone to type in an invalid email or something like that, you're going to feel good about that because that's what you set out to do. And when you do this, you, you're going to be motivated to move forward in the programming, okay? Also, like I said before, if you're having a hard time, I said move to something else. But let's say you are getting it, you understand the language you're in, but you have some bugs and stuff that are driving you bananas. You don't think you can help. There's no help on Google. If you don't have a bruise on your forehead that's black and blue after learning or while learning your language of choice, then you're not doing it right. Because, there, you know, I say it's par for the course. It's expected that you're going to have tons of times where you're just completely stuck. It's your fault. It's my fault when it happens to me. And I always say it's the little things that get you. Sometimes I'll be chasing something down for a week and it's a comma or a semicolon or I forgot a simple word or worse, I commented out a line of code I thought was there so it didn't make sense to me that it wasn't working and I just couldn't comprehend that when I finally got down there, you know, after like a whole bunch of time of, you know, oh no, it's not that, um, you know, banging my head against the wall, getting that bruise on my forehead um, that I find the fix. So expect that. It's to be expected. The other side of the coin is when you nail it and you get it working, you're going to be like, yeah, rock on, right on, yoo -hoo, yeah. You, you know, that's good. That's what you want. That's the part that actually can motivate you to keep moving forward. All right? So what programming language should you start with? I think it has to be the one that's right for you. I think you need to Google and find out the strengths and weaknesses of, of each of them, as many as you can find. Find out what other people are saying. And remember, like my dear friend Peter says to me, Yeah, if you ask three people about RC airplane flying and, you know, ask for advice, if you ask three people, you're going to get about six or seven different responses. It's the same way with computer programming. Everybody's got an agenda. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody says the other guy's wrong. All right? How about this? We're all wrong. You know what's right? The one that works for you. What are you trying to do? What are, you, what are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals? Is this for fun? Is this for work? Do you want to make games on the phone, on a computer? Do you want to make business applications? Do you want to get a job? All these things matter. You know, if you just have a slight interest, it still applies to you. Because even as a hobbyist, what do you want to do? Well, I wanted to make a computer program to talk to my satellite radio. All right, well... <laughs> You know, <laughs> go do some research on ones that probably can do that. You know what I mean? Because there, there's definitely ones that will do that that are, you know, perfect for it. There's some that will, you, you can make it work. And then there's some that probably aren't a good idea. So, once again, what's the right programming language for you to start learning how to program is completely based on your needs, your desires, and where you want to go. That's it. I'm Jason Sage with Jagus LLC. Have a good day.